Andrei Soyevich Arshavin was born in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, in Russia on the 29th of May 1981. He had a difficult childhood. His parents divorced before he became a teenager and was forced to sleep on the floor of a cramped flat. He escaped death, surviving being hit by a car, and was a troubled student, who often misbehaved and was later expelled. Andre's father, Sergei Arshavin, who had been an amateur player, suggested he pursue a career in football, and at seven years old, he was enrolled in the football academy of his local club, Zenit. In 2000, after a 12-year stint in their youth side, the 19-year-old was selected for Zenit's first team squad. Arshavin took some time to find the position he suited best, and was played across the midfield until ultimately adopting the second striker position. The young forward impressed, picking up the fan named Shava, and in 2007, he became the key talisman of the Russian side, making 22 goal contributions in 30 Russian Premier League matches. He was the obvious league standout, paramount to Zenit's first top flight title since 1984. His form continued into their UEFA Cup campaign, in the final of which he was named man of the match as Zenit overcame Rangers to lift their first ever European trophy. As the competition's best provider with five assists, the 27-year-old earned a nomination for the 2008 Ballon d'Or, finishing sixth in the voting. The forward was called up for the Russian national team and debuted on the 17th of May 2002, netting his first goal the following February. However, he was overlooked in the selections for the 2002 World Cup and Euro 2004, but was spurred on aiming to feature in every tournament he possibly could for Russia from now on. Gus Hiddink granted his wish in the wake of Shava's incredible year and included him in the Euro 2008 squad. Suspension left him benched for Russia's first two group games and his introduction was eventually made against Sweden. The Zenit striker had a crucial impact providing Roman Pavluchenko's opener before securing the Russian victory and qualification to the knockout stage with a goal of his own. Arshavin would go on to give one of his best performances against Holland in the quarterfinals. After extra time, he crossed in the assist to Russia's second of the game before tying it up with some individual brilliance to earn him a second official Man of the Match award. However, hearts were soon broken, losing the semi-final to eventual champion Spain, who clinically dominated the Russians. Hiddink's squad could find solace in their podium finish, returning home with bronze medals. Shava had been Russia's most creative and exciting player, earning him a spot in the UEFA team of the tournament to top off his remarkable summer. A transfer was expected to happen straight away for the breakout star, but Arshavin and Zenit struggled to agree on the next move. Across 2008, negotiations crumbled between the Russians and Newcastle, Barcelona and Tottenham, who failed to reach the desired £22 million asking price. Arshavin simply wanted to leave, but considered himself above Spurs, who had offered the most, and with these demeaning Tottenham comments, he became destined for their arch rivals. During the 2009 January transfer window, Arsenal and Zenit were on the verge of a deal to bring the forward to London. Complications and delays extended the process into early February, when, in the dying moments of a prolonged window, Arsenal announced they had signed the Russian on a long-term deal. In Sol Campbell's old number 23 shirt, Arshavin gradually grew into the team, and within a month, Shava had provided two assists and netted his first Arsenal goal. It's absolutely fantastic play, and it's a stunning goal. Cup tied by his Zenit involvement, he couldn't feature in any of the Gunners' European fixtures as part of their 2008-09 Champions League campaign. The forward's true introduction to England came in late April against Liverpool at Anfield, one of Europe's most challenging arenas. Yet, the Russian wasn't deterred by the roaring northern chants and got the Gunners off to a perfect start, claiming the opener. The Scousers replied with two goals to go ahead, 
until the Russian struck a glorious bending long shot to equalise. And how about that? He smashed it in and Arsenal were level. Before taking the lead three minutes later. This Premier League classic finished 4 4, with Arshavin having buried all of Arsenal's goals that night to become the first player for an away team at Anfield to score four in one league game since 1946. The star of the night became an instant fan favourite, who believed the Russian striker could be the needed saviour of a struggling Arsenal side under Arsene Wenger. OK, well, well done tonight. You're the Barclays man of the match. Well played. Thank you. Thank you. Shava began to form formidable on-pitch bonds with the likes of Cesc Fabregas and Robin Van Persie, which benefited the Gunners, who conceded just one loss that season after his arrival, going unbeaten for an 11-match streak. In May, after being named the Premier League Player of the Month for April, the 27-year-old was handed the captain's armband for a match versus Portsmouth, in which he provided two assists and won the penalty for the Gunners. These efforts saved the London side a fourth place finish in the Premier League, but a complete lack of silverware was disappointing. Despite featuring in less than a quarter of all Arsenal's league matches, Shava came runner-up to the Dutch marksman in the poll for Arsenal's player of the season. Wenger supported the growing notion that Arshavin would make a big impact in North London over the upcoming years, claiming the forward had grasped a strong understanding of English football. Quickly into the next campaign, the Russian star continued his form, scoring in the Champions League and performing brilliantly in England, leading up to the Christmas break. In the absence of Van Persie, Arshavin would often take up a more central role in the offence, notably against Liverpool, when the striker gave a man of the match worthy performance and scored the winner to complete the Arsenal comeback. Andre Arshavin at Anfield again. Into the new year, Arsenal were at the table's peak. However, in their Champions League quarter-final against Barcelona, Shava strained his calf, leaving him out of action for the remainder of April. By the time of his May return, the Gunners' waning form had extinguished title hopes, and they finished third. Russia, still captained by Arshavin, failed to qualify for the 2010 World Cup having conceded a place in South Africa to Slovenia, who narrowly overcame them on away goals. The Russian was gradually pushed out wide by Wenger, to fit in either Samir Nasri or Theo Walcott, which disturbed Shava, who craved the freedom of a central role. The Frenchman, who stated that he'd noticed a dip in the Russian's form, began to bench the 30-year-old, and his numbers suffered. Granted, Arshavin did enjoy some great moments throughout the 2010-11 season, including a scissor-kick volley against Wigan, he produces again, Arshavin. an August winner at Ewood Park, great chance. Another great chance for Arshavin, and he takes it. but his most notable moment came against Catalan giants Barcelona in the Champions League round of 16. After 80 minutes, 1-0 down on the back foot against arguably the strongest ever European side, the substituted Russian curled the ball past Victor Valdez to follow up Van Persie's equaliser and steal the victory. Historically, this was Arsenal's first ever time beating Barca in any competition and it was Arshavin's primary knockout stage UCL goal. Alas, his efforts were ultimately in vain as Guardiola's side won the tie 4-3 and progressed to become European champions. West Brom saw the best of Arshavin in mid-March, when he scored and assisted to salvage a point for the Gunners. Across April and May, he wasn't involved in a single goal, nor a full 90 minutes on the pitch, and it was clear Wenger's interest for the Russian was fading. As the 2011-12 season got underway, a lack of work rate was becoming apparent, and Arshavin began to receive criticism. He regularly refused to track back and help with defence, which led to Wenger continuing to drop him while fans lost faith in the Russian. This was evident against Man United at the Emirates when Arshavin was brought on in place of young star Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. As the number 23 was seen by the 50,000 Red supporters, the forward was met by a chorus of boos. 
justified by his lacklustre performance and laziness in defence, allowing Antonio Valencia to brush past him and assist Danny Welbeck for United's winner. This loss indicated the beginning of the end for Shava's time with the Gunners, and after assisting club legend Thierry Henry's winning strike against Sunderland, he was loaned back to Zenit in late February to finish the season. A key reason for his homecoming was to try and get some game time, and hold his place in the Russian national side for the 2012 European Championships. Three goals in 11 matches were sufficient, and the skipper was selected in May for the squad. Russia managed to acquire four points from their three group games, helped by Arshavin's three assists from the left flank. They were cruelly eliminated in the group stage by Greece, who finished with the same points and a worse goal difference, but beat the Russians in their game, progressing on the head-to-head -head rule. Their devastated captain responded to fan critique with blame, stating that it's their fault, as they set their expectations and shouldn't be offended that they weren't met. This was his final international competition, as he was omitted from the Russian World Cup squad two years later. He returned to England from his loan to feature in just 11 games, and was involved in seven goals. Players over, one of them is Arshavin, and that is a lovely finish by the Russian. From late January to the season's end, Arshavin wasn't selected for the squad, and it became apparent that the club was letting him see out his contract, which would expire in the summer. The 32-year-old would depart North London on a free transfer in June 2013, signing a two-year contract for Zenit. Overall, Arshavin netted 31 goals and provided 46 assists in 145 matches, and during those five seasons, the Russian provided some incredible Arsenal memories. Four. However, he underwent a tragic fall from grace, ultimately due to laziness. Shava didn't deserve full blame for his English shortcomings, and should share responsibility with Wenger. The long-term manager was losing his touch, and the forward can be grouped with the likes of Jovino, Danilson, and Marouan Shamak as a Wenger-era failure who never reached the heights expected of him. Forced out wide when more comfortable in central roles and surrounded by mediocrity, Arshavin couldn't flourish in a red shirt. Following the transfers of Van Persie, Nasri and Fabregas to bigger clubs, the introverted Russian also grew a sense of isolation in London, which butchered his confidence. After two years back in Russia with Zenit and Kuban Krasnodar, Arshavin saw out the remainder of his career in Kazakhstan with FC Kairat before fully retiring in December 2018. The troubled boy from Leningrad had developed into a world-class player under the guidance of his local club and become a national star. The Premier League dream was irresistible and his move to Arsenal began perfectly, demonstrating his skill as both a provider and goalscorer. Though quite diminutive in stature, Shava wasn't physically shy and could go shoulder to shoulder with many fullbacks, using his trickery and bullet pace to beat them. He enjoyed a few seasons as the Gunners 23, before fading from Wenger's plans into his 30s. A Russian hero and fan favourite, Andrei Arshavin was a bit of an oddball, whether he was leaving a strip club horseback or completing a degree in fashion design the forward favoured the occasional off-field antic. The Premier League latecomer ultimately failed to succeed in North London, winning no silverware and facing a steady demise. Though his Anfield Hall and iconic celebrations live on in the memories of fans, Arshavin will forever be known as a player who could have been so much more.